Good morning. I thought today I would like to tell you about this amazing cloth. Um, definitely a story cloth. And it has a good story. So this is a Sumba cloth and you can see with the motifs that are pictorial in this case um, is actually telling an entire story and the story it happens to be telling is about a uh, ceremony, a funeral ceremony in Sumba, which are incredible ceremonies and not many people get to see them because they're about a 14 day event. So in what they, the sellers who were very active in the 1980s, in the 19, mostly in the 1980s in Sumba, is because they couldn't keep tourists on the island long enough to actually have them see an entire funeral ceremony, they began to depict it in cloth. So this particular cloth wasn't ever, this kind of a cloth with such an amazing story on it, wouldn't be used traditionally uh, in the ways that other ceremonial cloths are used in Sumba. This wouldn't be used to um, as a gift exchange in marriage. It wouldn't be used um, to wrap a body in a funeral, but it was entirely made, designed and created for the tourist market in the 1980s. And uh, a way in which we can see from the very top where there are actually birds up at the top of the, of the image. So what you have to imagine is that these are the warp threads and this cloth is over three meters long. And it is a different motif at the top and different motifs in the middle and different motifs at the end. So there are only repeats in the motif in the tying process that would take you in the, um, the vertical part of it, in the warp part of it, because you could create mirror imagery only there, but you're not creating mirror imagery in um, taking your warp threads and folding them in half and then um, being able to create both motifs that would appear on the bottom and the top as being the same. So the tying frame had to be three meters, which is an incredible tying frame. And the weaving, of course, is weaving this as um, also as a three meter long piece. So it starts off with, um, with birds and birds often there are certain birds who have a call and they're an omen of death and then you have the um, starting to bring the body in procession to the burial ground so you have um, people here up in this part and they're playing gongs um, you have chickens and buffalo which are being sacrificed um, this is starting with the horses that are starting a procession with the papangan, because that's what the cloth is called, the papangan, and processing the body that's led actually by a horse that is riderless. Chick, 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 chick. With the lamba. So this looks like a buffalo, but it's not. It is a riderless horse that has a gold buffalo type um, ornament on the head. So the riderless horse leads the procession as though the person who had just passed is on its way to the funeral ground. It's then accompanied by another six members and when they get to the funeral area, the huge big stones, it's placed in, wrapped in many, many textiles, which it's already been processed, wrapped in many textiles, and then pl placed into these incredible stone graves. And it finishes off with um, chickens and people, and then the end of it here being chickens and, um, and also butterflies. It seems like there's a couple of monkeys thrown in there. Um, utterly and absolutely a stunning, astounding piece of ikat work. Um, that ikat, I mean, is to tie a knot. So wherever you see the white, that was tied off throughout the entire process. And when you think of tying a knot, you're actually tying on thread and it's a little square because you can't create circles. So look at the movement in this with the, with the heads, the bodies, the chickens, and being able to actually get this incredible movement 
roundedness by using your ikat threads. Um, it's dyed first in indigo. These light blue areas after the first application of indigo were tied off again. Then it was dyed, um, continued to be dyed in indigo to get the deepening. These red threads were resisting with tied threads during that whole ikat process, the whole indigo process. Then the red threads are open, the white threads are kept closed, these light blue are kept closed, and you start to do all of the red dye process. So probably over a year to create this piece. It's, it's an utterly wonderful piece. Um, and they, they finished it off with this kabakil. So kabakil is the edging. And this kabakil has ika again on it which is really unusual. Generally the kabakil or the fringe, the edging is just bands of color. So to do the kabakil, you have your warp threads coming down, you create a whole nother little loom, and they have tied and dyed their threads for what now becomes the warp all the way to the other end. And these warp threads here, which wouldn't be fringed yet, become the weft and this is then woven on this tiny little loom and the woman is sitting actually with this in front of her it's stretched out along to tied off to um, a part of the house and then she weaves this incredible kabakil so cloths that are not traditional are um, also a stunning piece of work and this is a result these kinds of non-traditional textiles um, really came out of, as I said, selling to the tourist market, but they also came out of a government program that was talking, wanting to support the traditional weaving. And in the 1980s, they set up schools in Kupan. And Kupan is on the island of Timor. Sumba is some distance away. You would have had to get there by boat. And they were design schools. And of course, the only people at that time who could have gone to those schools would have been the men. So the men became the designers of these cloth, and hence you start to see it in the late 70s and 80s, these really large Sumba um, cloths with big designs, so uh, humans or ancestral figures that took up the entire cloth. These were like hand-drawn designs that um, the men began to innovate from traditional uh, motifs and taking them and elongating them um, placing them in different parts of the textile. And that was very, very much what you saw in the 1980s, some of these incredible, beautiful pieces. Uh, they're quite different than what the structure of the more traditional textiles were, which are very much in sections. Um, so yeah, it's the stories in cloth come in many shapes and forms, and this is really one of the absolutely most stunning ones in our collection.